Ladies and gentlemen, no, you have not entered the gates of heaven. You're actually just listening to a podcast, and this podcast is called Cranked and Ranked. Uh, welcome, everyone. And, I mean, I guess if you want to pretend that this is what heaven will be like, um, that's a kind of a nice thought, right? Um, but <laughs> we're here again to rank something rock or metal or music related as we normally do. Um, usually band discographies, and today, that's exactly what we're doing. As usual, I am your host, Stephen, A-A-K-A. Oh, I almost, man, I almost did, did so well with that intro. And then my, 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 my brain made it fall apart. Um, Stephen, it's a, it, it's a, it's essentially a running gag at this point, <laughs> isn't it? It would, it wouldn't be cranked and ranked without a flubbed intro. <laughs> I mean, I could just be lazy about it and just make it, you know, hello, cranked and ranked, old head, Eddie Sparks, go, and that could be the <laughs> beginning. But anyway, yes, I'm, I'm Stephen, aka old head. With me as always, Mr. Eddie Sparks, whose lovely voice you already heard. Hello, hello, what's up? Yeah, so um. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. One day I will, I will solidify the intro, but I feel like it, I, it, I have a different vibe depending on what band we're about to go into. Cause I, yeah. I feel like if we were about to like dive into, you know, ranking like a black metal group, I, I wouldn't be all like, hello everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be a little more like, Hey, so today no, I don't know. I'd be like in, in NPR <laughs> or something like that. So we're we're going to be discussing uh, five, five demos from the early 90s from a band that we don't even know the name of. It, they're super underground. You can't decipher <laughs> the name from their logo, but we will be trying to decipher the message inside their songs today. But no, <laughs> we will affectionately refer to them as a pile of twigs until we get a, <laughs> a proper tr translator in here. <laughs> Um, but no, you don't have to think that much for today's show. And that's why I love episodes like this. Today, we're going to be ranking the uh, full length studio albums from the band Cinderella, uh, which is only four albums. And uh, and this all came about, of course, if, if you're if you give a shit about Cinderella, then, you know, that guitarist Jeff Labar uh, recently passed away. And so um we were just like, yeah, we, we haven't talked about Cinderella yet. Let's make it a, yeah. a, a tribute to him, a tribute to the band, and uh, finally get around to uh, an 80s hard rock band that was, you know, uh, when I think of 80s hard rock, they're one of the first that come to mind, really. Yeah, and by extension as well, um, sadly, within the same week, uh, Gary Corbett also died, who was the keyboardist for both Cinderella and Kiss, at points as oh, well. So, so was he yeah, so was he on albums or was he just a live keyboardist? I'm I'm not entirely sure, but I I, I didn't want to I didn't want to do one without the other. Yeah, so I just wanted no, to make sure. Totally. Yeah. Even if he was just a live keyboardist, I mean all those people that made the music come to life when they went on the road, those people are just as important. I mean, you know, so backup vocalists or or um, shadow guitar players doing the hard parts in the corner. Who knows? Some bands have that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be talking about Cinderella, um, which um, a as we normally do, we will talk about where we came on board with the band that we're talking about. And in this particular case, the, uh, Cinderella is a big deal for me because yeah, the album Night Songs was one of the first albums I can remember picking out for myself when I was a kid. Yeah. So I was I was I was probably 9 years old and um the, the 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 hard rock albums that I chose for myself like early on it was Van Halen 1984 but then um it was all around the same time it was Bon Jovi Slippery When Wet uh Europe the Final Countdown and Cinderella Night Songs. Those were three albums that um, I think I've probably told the story before about how we had a, a grocery store that had a tape, a cassette tape section, and it was right past the the checkout stands. And so my mom would, I'd be at the store with my mom, and she'd be waiting in the long ass line to check out, and I'd be like, I'm gonna go look at the tapes. And I would always run back with one, and it would always be like, Hey, these guys have long hair, look kind of cool. Let's check this band out. And my mom would always let yeah. me pick one. Um, every every couple weeks, I think she'd let me pick one. 
And one of those weeks, it was Cinderella. Because you look at the cover of Night Songs, and you're like a nine-year-old kid who's getting into hard rock. How could you not want yeah. to listen to that album? And so, sure. so not only were they a, you know, one of my early choices, but they were an early gateway into hard rock music. Because before that, I mean, I guess you could say that Van Halen's kind of hard rock. But prior to that, you know, I didn't listen to a lot of hard rock music. It was, it was, it was here and there. But but once I really started to get into it, the uh, Cinderella was a big deal at the time. Um, how about you? Where did you first hear Cinderella? Okay, let me let me set the scene. Okay. Okay. It's uh, Christmas 2015. All right. And at this point, I'm like a year deep into getting into glam. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got I've got my Wasp. I've got Def Leppard. I've got pretty much 80s metal across the board, but more in the hair metal zone. But, like, something happened, something really clicked for me when I heard um, Hot and Bothered from the Wayne's World soundtrack. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, i got to get my hands on this stuff. And, yeah, essentially I got Night Songs uh, on CD for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty much, because my car had a CD player at the time, that thing must have rotated on a loop for like three straight months, yeah, you know, because I I just fell in love with the sound of the album. Yeah, yeah, it, it just fucking rules. It is pissing down with rain outside, and it's really noisy. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna really quickly shut the window. Oh, I couldn't it's even, hitting the. I couldn't even hear it. To be honest, do you, do you think it'll be, do you think it'll be nice like kind of ASMR? Relaxing. It will. Do, it does, might be. Doesn't the beginning of Night Song start out with like r- rain? Can't you hear rain? Isn't? Am I thinking something different? Maybe it's just wind that you hear. Fuck it. I'm so, keeping it. It's a I'm little bit, a little yeah. bit of atmosphere. But <laughs> to be honest, we probably won't be able to hear most of it anyway. But you know, just yeah. just in case, it's like an added little added effect on our on our podcast. Yeah. So, um, as far as as far as rain goes, too, it's it's tipping down. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Well, hopefully, but, um, hopefully it doesn't lead to more technical issues because we've we've had our share <laughs> recently. We've been on a we've been on a streak recently, but because we're so professional, <laughs> we uh, you hardly ever notice it unless we bring it up. I was but, yeah. pretty proud of myself for the last episode because I edited oh. it in a way that you never knew that there was any issue. I even took part of a conversation from one part and a, and a different part and put them together to where it looked like you were responding to me, but it was like, yeah, it was like 20 minutes later. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking good at this shit. So nobody Hell ever yeah. knew, but yeah, hopefully that won't be the, be the case today. So, um, yeah, so they only have four albums. Um, and it was always a thing that I, it was kind of disappointing to me because, um, I like Cinderella as a band and I'm really big on like, original bands so whenever a band gets back together or puts out a new album i always look and say well see well how many original members do we have here um because sometimes there can be literally no original members and if they still put put out a badass album then i don't really care but yeah my my allowance for things to be kind of eh if if you have more original members i'm going to give you more credit um, but with Cinderella, it was a thing where, you know, they did reunion shows and stuff, but for the most part, Tom Kiefer just went solo and did his own thing. And I've never really been that interested in what he's been doing. And we'll get yeah. in, we'll get into why as we talk about Cinderella's albums. But, um, it was, it was always disappointing because I'm like, Oh, why can't they just do, why can't Cinderella just get back together and do another hard rock album? Um, and uh, now that looks like that's probably not really going to be a thing. Although it would be really mm. shitty if all of a sudden Tom Kiefer's like, let's get Cinderella back together. And I, <laughs> like Jeff dies and like, n- now's the time. <laughs> anyway, so let's, uh, let's oh. go ahead and jump right into it because we're only <laughs> dealing with four albums. And so um, we're not really tied to, uh, to trying to keep things quick or not going off onto tangents. So um, that may happen in this episode. Um, So let's just go ahead and start. As usual, I throw it over to Eddie to start with his first pick. So what is your number four Cinderella album? I want to state here, this is probably one of the hardest rankings I've ever had to do. Yeah? Because I don't believe there's a bad album, maybe even a bad song 
here because mm-hmm. consistency wise for an album released in 1994 by by the way my number four pick is still climbing all right but solely based on the fact it's the album i've spent the least amount of time with yeah but listening to it now all right you wouldn't know it came out in 94 at yeah. the latest at the latest you'd think it was 91 and i don't know whether or not it was like recorded a few years prior because there is a four year gap between heartbreak station and this one so i don't know if it was one of those like label pressure album delay bullshit things that happened back then as far as, far um, as i know the only thing that was previously recorded is hot and bothered everything else was recorded around the time around 94 ah well it's uh it, it's probably the only album of its kind production wise in 1994 yeah. because it sounds it sounds 80s when i was like, listening it, to it back i was like oh eddie's eddie's probably going to talk about the reverb on this album <laughs> because yeah, there's a lot and, of it and that's the thing it 1994 that that kind of thing couldn't have been more out of style like all of the bands yeah. have gotten super super dry and stripped back by that point you know, you listen to all of the um, grunge bands and all of the glam bands that tried to go grunge. Yeah. They were all rejecting the big 80s stadium reverb stuff. And uh, that rain is obnoxiously I, I can I can hear it. I can hear it now. <laughs> yeah. That is, that is coming down. I'm kind of... You know what? I think I'm going to shut my window right, solely based on the fact that I don't want a lightning bolt to hit my computer because it's literally all metal because it's a Mac. <laughs> Plus, you're all metal also. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Thunderstorms are a real fright for me. Hold on. <laughs> well, while I'll he's be, doing right that, I'll, 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 I'll say a couple things. Well, no, you, you know, he's taking his headphones off, so he can't even hear me. So I'm going to call Christ. him a complete tool right now, and he would never even know that I was doing that. Honestly, Fuck like me. this in this... This podcast wouldn't keep going if it wasn't for me, because Eddie is a complete mess. I don't know if anybody knows this, but he needs to get his shit together. Woo! Anyway, so um, I'm gonna go. Let's let's get back on track before he comes back and gets his headphones back on. We won't. He won't even know that we were talking about him. So, shh, everybody, and don't put anything in the comments and say that I said some things because that is. That, that's just not cool at all. Okay, peanut butter platypus. All right, there you go. So, um, yeah, so Cinderella is a, 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 a great, great band, yeah, and Still Climbing is a, is their last album. And um, here's, here's Eddie Sparks coming back and getting his headphones back on. He's, he's taking his sweet time doing that as well. Um, but now, now we're back. Hello, hello. I didn't know it was fucking tornado season. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I've I haven't seen rain like that in maybe years. Yeah. And I and I live in the southwest of England, which is wet. So <laughs> I, I live in an area where you you have to deal with not necessarily hurricanes but the the everything happening because of the hurricane because I'm not right on the coast but I'm yeah. close enough to where it's like if 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 a big hurricane comes um, we're gonna feel a whole lot of it. Yeah, yeah. Goddamn, dude. Um, so, 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 where was I? <laughs> we were. You had just started talking about still climbing and about the production on still climbing, about how it was very not 1994. Okay, so uh, you had all of the grunge bands and all of the glam bands that went quote unquote grunge, mm-hmm. uh, not doing the reverb thing, and here comes Cinderella you know, swinging their dicks around, being like, nah, fuck you guys, we're our own thing. Which is, like, really... To be honest, they were. Like, they, they're they not like all the other hair bands. Because I think, really, image-wise, they were a, you know, hair metal band. But sound-wise, they had a lot more in common with bands like Aerosmith the further they went along. Yeah with just being ballsy, bluesy, hard rock. But, um, yeah, this sounds full stadium rock in an era where that didn't exist. Well, I mean, to to be fair, you, you can give them some credit for sticking to their guns, but you also have to remember that 
the kind of music they were doing wasn't necessarily that big of a risk because you brought up Aerosmith the year be- the year before Aerosmith had a huge album Get a Grip that yeah. had all these bluesy songs on it and it was a massive success. They Aerosmith didn't go grunge. So if you really yeah. want to say that it's not really a risk. You know, they 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 probably heard that and said, "Oh, well, we can continue doing what we were already wanting to do because uh Aer- Aerosmith's having a having a good time at it." And also there were other bands that were still pretty successful like the Black Crows. Black Crows came around in 89 or 90 and they were doing full up blues rock kind of stuff and they were pretty successful so so i give them credit for sticking to their guns not only style wise but production style wise but it but it wasn't it wasn't the huge risk that that some would think (laughs) you know yeah yeah i think i think it was more of like a uh like a surface thought in the back of your head but if if you really look at cinderella compared to some of the others Uh uh-huh like it, they definitely stick out because yeah. they were more than a quote unquote, you know, glam band. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you know, you got Bad Attitude Shuffle, fucking awesome song. Uh, so, so is All Comes Down. Talk is Cheap has a cool, sleazy, scary vibe to it. Mm-hmm. Um, Hard to Find the Words is the first ballad of the record, and you can just you can just hear the Leonard Skinner influence oozing from that one. Um, Blood from a Stone is a bluesy hard rock track, still climbing as a kick-ass chorus. Um, now, here's the thing I've noticed with Cinderella: in the middle of every album, they've got a kick-ass, fast-driving rock song, yeah. and freewheeling. Freewheeling is no exception to the rule. Like I would break the speed limit to that song. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, th- Through the rain, uh, like me right now. Uh, it's ballad time again. <laughs> yeah, get your lighters in the air if the fucking rain doesn't put them out. Uh, <laughs> uh, easy come, easy go is more hard rock and hard rock. Uh, the road- <laughs> <laughs> Let's just put that on the on the hype sticker on the front of the album. More hard rock and hard rock from Cinderella. Yeah, I I I made. I did a little giggle when I wrote that note. I was like, (laughs) that's pretty good, actually. Um, Road is still long. Has like, that's the thing I put. 80s cowboy vibes are strong on this one. And it's in the mid 90s at this point. Yeah. But like, finally, like I said, Hot and Bothered is my favorite Cinderella song. And I love in Wayne's World when you hear it in the gas works in that like uh, scene. And the mix is really bass heavy, so you get to hear that bitchin' bass line riff underneath yeah. the chorus. Uh, dum, dum, every dum, every dum, time dum, I hear dum, Hot and Bothered, dum, I, in, my, in the back of my head, I'm just like, Stacy's here fucking ruining everything again. Yeah. Why won't you Psycho just leave me alone? Beast. I don't even <laughs> own a gun, let alone many, many guns, guns that would necessitate an entire rack. rack. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's gonna be awesome man in the edit. <laughs> it's one of my favorite movies ever and um so you it put, is my favorite movie ever oh hey so yeah. it never gets old to me but that, that some <laughs> movies like the you watch them so many times that um the music and the sound effects and the dialogue start to become one long song that you've memorized. Yeah. That's why yep. that's why I was one of those people in the early no, it was the late nineties. When I was young, I was a massive Star Wars fan. And they released yeah. these special editions of Star Wars in the they put them out in the theaters first. And I went to go see the uh, a new hope, like a new version of episode four. And I just remember being like this is awful. They've ruined the song. <laughs> the song goes like this, because especially a movie like Star Wars, the music is really big. The Everything yeah. about it was put together, in my opinion, perfectly. And here comes the guy who made the movie fucking up the movie. And so that's, that was the beginning <laughs> of the end of me being a Star Wars fan. Even though I've enjoyed some things here and there along the way, most of it, like the magic is was totally ripped away from me. So it's like if somebody put out a special edition of Wayne's World, I, I would just be like, please, just don't, just put them as extras, you know? <laughs> yeah. Because I don't know, I don't know what it is about it. Because she, like, sure, it doesn't take away the original version, and I'm the first person to, you know, to to 
to talk shit to people to get bent out of shape about, you know, oh, they remade the movie. I'm like, well, it doesn't matter that they remade it. The, the original is still there. But sometimes a movie is just so important to your life that you're just like, don't fuck with this, okay? Just yeah, not this one. Like, it, uh, which part is it as well? Because I know, I know Wayne's World pretty much in Inside Out too, mm-hmm. and I, you know, I was I was thinking then the I can't I can't exactly remember which part comes before it, but when I'm when I'm watching it, I know when the um, when the guitar part comes where it's like. Oh, that's when that's during Bohemian Rhapsody. No, no, it's it's, it's uh, yeah, but like later. Oh, on later the, on, yeah, yeah. I think that's after. Like, wow. I think that's after they're in the car um, and the Red Hot Chili Peppers song is playing. Um, yeah, when that's went, that's the one. And it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. See what I'm saying? It's like a song. Yeah, it, like it, it, yeah. it goes. That's how the part goes. Um, oh, what? I, I need to do I need to do the uh, Cassandra guitar speech while I'm here. Oh, uh, all right, cool. Wow, sixty four Fender Stratocaster in classic white with triple single coil pickups and a whammy bar. Pre CBS Fender corporate buyout. <laughs> I'd ra- I'd file down the nut and raise it raise the low E or something like that. I fell off at the end, but <laughs> I was doing really fucking it was well. A, I was gonna tell you that aside from being nowhere near as attractive as Tia Carrere, <laughs> you did a pretty <laughs> good job. <laughs> uh, I still need to learn the um, Garth drum solo though. Yeah. But I have like the, I have the kit to do it now. Yeah. <laughs> and I love that. But uh, yeah, still climbing. Yeah, hot and bothered was in was in <laughs> Wayne's role. That's why we got there. But you know what? We can. I can. We'll jump right over because still climbing is also my number four. And um, my outlook on this album is not as as positive as yours is. Um, yeah. Because in my opinion, and this 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 it once again comes from when I came into the band because I came into the band with Night Songs, and I followed them, you know, throughout their career and i have to say that at the time and then now going back and listening to all of these albums again for this episode to me the more that tom Kiefer leaned on the blues for his songwriting the more uninteresting the songs became so Mm. it, it just to me it's like something started to get lost where they were a, a unique band because of what they were doing. And then they became one of a thousand bands that were doing similar blues rock music. And so yeah. while this album does have a good energy and it does have enjoyable moments on it, it's like a really big step down from the third album, in my opinion. Mm. Um, and I, and to be fair, it's like with this album, I, I see why it didn't really do very well. Because, like, if you weren't already a Cinderella fan, this wasn't going to win you over. And a lot of people who were just casual fans of that style of music had also moved on, and this album was not going to keep them interested. But then you have little things on the album, like, hard to find the words. It literally, he's he's trying to write Freebird. If you listen to how the song starts, and I'm just (laughs) like, oh, come on, man. Like, it's like... That's just way too like I'm trying really hard to be southern and bluesy and it's unfortunately so many bands started doing that. It's almost like there were two camps with 80s hard rock. 80s hard rock started to move into the 90s and every band made one of two choices. One, we're going to get heavier and maybe try to do a little bit of grungy or maybe just do a stripped down more metally kind of thing or we're kind of bluesy now. Like, that's the two yeah. areas that everybody went. So you had, like, Warrant and Skid Row that just got heavier. And then you had Poison and bands like that that all of a sudden were like, oh, now we're gonna, every album's going to have a slide guitar <laughs> going. <laughs> yeah. And so, <laughs> and so yeah. it's it, – and, and I, I honestly think I'm not going to throw Cinderella into that camp because I feel like it started to happen because of Cinderella. Well, maybe a little bit because of songs like Wanted, Dead, or Alive by Bon Jovi, but – We'll get to the album, but I think when they did Long Cold Winter and they started upping the bluesiness, I think that mm. that that and the other bands that were doing similar things, I think that led to other bands going, oh, yeah, the, oh, we like this kind of blues rock style. But, it, yeah. it, but in 1994, it was just more of the same. 
And to me, it always seemed like whether or not they meant it that way, it always seemed like the later albums, it seemed like they were trying to back away further and further from who they were in the beginning. And then once Mm. they got away from it, there really was little to work with songwriting wise. All of a sudden they were so, I say they, it's pretty much the Tom Kiefer show. Um, the, yeah, the, he was so tied to trying to be bluesy that there's so little wiggle room in there that if you're if you're now stripping away all these other things, then songwriting wise, you have so little space to work with that there's the only way to go is to make songs that sound similar to songs that everyone's already heard before. And yeah. the the capper on me putting this album at number four, all of those things. And then you get to Hot and Bothered, which does have a little bit of a bluesy feel. But all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, this is it's like the album picks up at the end. And I go, oh, remember when they used to have a lot more energy <laughs> yeah. and like, you know, be a little bit more rocking. And so, like, I think it all comes with perspective. Like, if you're a person that prefers a, a bluesy rock kind of thing, then Still Climbing is probably your favorite Cinderella album. But I want hard rock and hard rock in my music. Yeah. <laughs> and so you don't really get a lot of that here. You get a little bit of it, but it just feels like a band that's like, remember Cinderella? Nah, we're not, we don't really want to be associated with Cinderella, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, but even, even though like, Oh wait, you are Cinderella. Yeah. But now we're, you know, but we're doing this now. And like, it, it's, yeah. and it's weird coming from me because I do like it when bands make a, change and do something different but if you're literally just doing something that a lot of other bands are already doing and are doing something that doesn't seem very inspired then it it's it's fine because it makes a it makes an interesting discography and you can clearly see the path that they were on but it's a path where i feel like they they took a turn to one way and i was going the other way and i'm just like later cinderella i'll be over here <laughs> um so yeah so that's why it's number 4 cuz i just think it's it's good it's just nowhere near as good as the other three albums here's the thing i want to mention as well like real quick for such a hard rocking like band of that style uh-huh. they have like and and for, for want of a better word like the most princess, literal princess name, yeah, <laughs> you know, and, yeah, and they're one of the one of the harder edged ones, and I always I always found it interesting that they had like a, they did have like the flamboyance going on, but they also had that grit, yeah, and it's and it's such a strange juxtaposition to be like, oh yeah, uh, we're a really really hard rocking band yeah we're called cinderella it's like a fucking disney princess you yeah know? i'm gonna i'm gonna and, start a hard rock band and call it the little mermaid yeah or like <laughs> sleeping beauty you know there's to be honest they actually sound like band names i feel like i feel like it. sleeping beauty and snow white they're probably, probably already bands called that there's a band called snow white i know that for sure um Damn. but that's that's different disney's fucking metal dude <laughs> I mean, I guess so. <laughs> but you do have a point that it it is very it's a real it's also a very hard thing to google now. If you want to if yeah. you're googling Cinderella and you want the music, you got to put in all these extra words like google hard rock band music <laughs> like like just give me the right thing. I don't really care about yeah. the Disney movie. <laughs> but yeah, that was that um, was that was our collective number 4, which was uh which cool. was still climbing. Now, this is the part where I'm really intrigued to see where things go because I even surprised myself. Okay. Uh, so my number three is Long Cold Winter. All right. And this album keeps up like the hard rock of the previous record while, like we said, in introducing an increased amount of the blues into the mix. Yeah. But knowing me as the 80s guy, this is without a doubt their glossiest album mm-hmm. and the the production is big and clear but really accommodates for the blues edge but it really retains that like glossy slick stadium vibe at the same time um and track by track like bad seamstress blues 
Falling Apart at the Seams. I used to play this in a cover band uh, back in uni. Oh, yeah? And with good reason. Yeah, it was a, it was a fucking banger. <laughs> uh, Gypsy Road is a great song with an awesome riff. Mm -hmm. uh, super catchy. Don't Know What You Got Till It's Gone is uh, one of my favorite power ballads of all time. Top five, could, easily. I, I, I mean, I could, I could make an argument that it is the best power ballad. Like, and like here, yeah, it's 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 Here's, up there. Like it's an it's it's a contender to battle it out with like high enough by Damn Yankees and stuff like that as like incredible power ballads. Well, I'm going to offer up the argument that it's probably my favorite power ballad music video ever. Oh, yeah, because that music video is fucking incredible. Like the way that video ends with the band's silhouette against that lake in the sunset where it's all pink and orange yeah like it it's it's like the most beautiful image in all of 80s rock like at the way it fades out and does that freeze frame it's like the end of a coming of age movie yeah you know? um but that was around the that time that they 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 made so many music videos like I, like I think that one's unique in certain ways but there were so many music videos where they're like you guys are gonna stand on a mountain and we're gonna mm. fly around you <laughs> <laughs> you know, but they, but like they, but they, like for some reason, like I feel like they nailed it with that music video because it just fits the tone of the song so well, and just the iconic image of Tom Kiefer at the piano and the camera yeah. swooping around him. I'm just like, it's a very romantic kind of video for a yeah. song that's, you know, not very romantic. It's about getting your heart broken <laughs> again. You know, <laughs> honestly, like. I remember like one of the funniest memes I've ever seen. It was it was something along the lines of like it, it was in the everything glam metal nightclub group or something, mm -hmm. and it and it was like uh, it's so it, there's that bit from Rocky where he goes like don't tell me to not be a man or something like stop trying to stop me from being a man, and it says when you're crying screaming the lyrics to don't know what you got till it's gone at three a.m. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like yeah. Oh man, it's it's such a great song. Um, mm -hmm. the The last mile has a nice airy vibe atop like a hard rocker. Yeah, this one puts me in a really good mood. Second wind. Here's the mid album speed limit breaker. I love when they do a fast one because yeah, they just nail it every time. Uh, pardon me. Long cold winter is a slow bluesy title track awesome organ in the background like some led zeppelin vibes um if you don't like it has a guns and roses vibe all over it mm -hmm. uh and if you don't like it i do like it actually um <laughs> come well then they do care yeah <laughs> Um, Coming Home is a nice upbeat ballad mm -hmm. Fire and Ice is just damn fine 80s hard rock and uh, finally Take Me Back closes out the record man and it's 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 just a really really good album yep. you know like I said at the start there's there's not really a weak one here nope. like a lot of bands would kill to have albums these good and I think it's such a shame that they're kind of lumped in with obscure hair metal bands and it's like well, they have more substance than that guys like come on it, yeah well i mean yeah. it, it's it's more i think it's more just with in hindsight because at the time like they had i think like four music videos off of this album like they were all over mtv they were huge so it's I, it just yeah. so happens that they were a band that didn't translate into now probably because they didn't continue touring because Poison continued Probably. touring, you know, all, all these bands from back in the day, you know, most of them, they seem like they have some kind of presence still. But Cinderella was a band that kind of just faded away and it became the Tom Kiefer thing, which is fine. That's his prerogative, but. Yeah. But yeah, that's, uh, that's my number three with uh, Long Cold Winter. Awesome. I'm, I'm, if you, if you heard anything I said about still climbing then you probably already guessed that heartbreak station is my number three um because the things that i didn't really like about um still climbing pretty much started with uh heartbreak station although um i do like this album 
But the thing that you were talking about with Long Cold Winter, with Long Cold Winter, they there's bluesy elements in some of the songs, but there's also a lot of hard rockers, and the guitars are loud, and it feels like a rock album overall. Heartbreak, yeah. Heartbreak Station, all of a sudden the rock got turned down even more, and the bluesy part turned up. And um, I remember at the time that this album came out, I saw, I think it was the first video released from the album, I saw the video for Shelter Me, and as a... 12 year old kid i remember being like this is not really that good because <laughs> it's really not that great like it sounds like a song that you've already heard before um just the hmm. the right the writing wise it's not very unique and it and like i said once you go towards this area where you're trying to be too bluesy you you run into a wall really quick um so heartbreak station overall does have them leaning heavily on that blues side of things um but overall, it still has a pretty rockin' vibe that keeps the momentum of the album going. So while I'm not necessarily a big fan of the songwriting of a lot of the songs, the overall vibe is still pretty enjoyable. And yeah. and um, I got to give it some credit because even though it is bordering, you know, it's on the bluesy side of things, but it's a, it's a ballad. Heartbreak Station is one of my favorite Cinderella songs. Like, yeah. and I always like the fact that the majority of the song is Tom Kiefer singing in his kind of regular voice. Cause yeah. I, I always, though his vocal delivery was always very weird to me because I couldn't tell if he was always singing with his full voice or not because yeah. it's, it sounds like he's doing this, which is me just doing yeah. a falsetto. And I'm like, so I'm not singing with my full voice. And so it sounds kind of weak. And sometimes when Tom Kiefer would sing, it did sound kind of weak, but, mm. but, um, it's fine. It's, it was, it was his whole vibe, but, um, but I, for some reason when he, when he goes down low, I'm just like, Oh, it, it fits the song really well. Cause heartbreak station is a very sort of like, I'm a lonely, I'm a lonely loner on a lonely yeah. road. Um, <laughs> that's a, that's an IT crowd reference right there, <laughs> but um, <laughs> um, but it's it does have it gives you that vibe everything about it, but the the majority of the rest of the album, some of it to me is is generic to the point that I don't even think it could be distinguished as Cinderella if it wasn't for Tom's voice. If he wasn't the singer, mm. you would it would just be another band for the most part. It's stylistically it's a big departure yeah. from like the rock side of their sound and and so and like yeah. i said before if, if a band has a direction and they go with it and they just say fuck it here's what we want to do i'm that's fine i'm not going to fault them for it and they made a fairly good album but once again I, as i said with still climbing this is a huge step down for me from the first two albums and yeah. honestly going back and listening to this now I started to think about, well, this album didn't do as well for them as, as the first two albums did. And I started to think about it, and I was like, you know what? If, they, if Heartbreak Station was their debut album and the band had no ties to quote-unquote hair metal, I don't think the songs here are good enough. And so I think this album would have completely failed because... They, the, I feel like the reason why this album had some play anyway was because it had the Cinderella name and there were already Cinderella fans. But hmm. like I said, you had other bands around this time. Um, Tesla is a name that comes to mind. Obviously, the Black Crows who had just come out. You had these other bands that were doing a bluesy thing who, in, in my opinion, did it way better than Cinderella did. Um, and so you have this album that is in is right alongside these other bands and so if it didn't have the Cinderella name, I really think this is an album by a band that would have very quickly died off and we probably would never talk about them again. Um, so I don't know. It sounds like I'm being harsh, but I do enjoy this album. Um, it's just, there's a huge, like sometimes we talk about discographies and I make that claim that right here is where you draw a really big line and there's a really big gap. And hmm. there's, there's a really big gap to me between Heartbreak Station and Long Cold Winter, which we'll get to later, or I'll get to later. So um, really, I just think it's a good album that has one amazing song, Heartbreak Station, and then some other cool songs, and then several sort of whatever songs, and um, that's the end of it for me. So it's like, 
um, it really is, it really is the one that I listen to and I kind of go, man, I just, I wish that they had just kind of, kind of kept a little bit of the hard rock edge here because it just, I miss it. And, but that's just my, yeah. that's just my opinion. I just think that overall, um, the actual style isn't the problem. The The problem is the songs aren't as strong. So that's why it's here at number three. Cool. So that's a, that's a good little segue because my number two is Heartbreak Station. <laughs> hey! <laughs> and, <laughs> and um, yeah, f- for me, this album, I, I hear a lot of country on it as well yeah. as the blues. Like there's, there's quite a few, you know, Southern rock. I don't know. There's a lot of Southern rock vibes on here. And, uh, you know, I'm, I would say I'm definitely more into that sound than you are. It's really being, weird that being, I live in Texas. I was, I've lived here my whole life. I don't like country music. I don't really, I don't, I can't think of any Southern rock that I think is any good. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and maybe it's because I had to, I had to grow up and live in an area where people would play this music. And I guess it just, it just, it, it doesn't, it rubs me the wrong way sometimes. So see that it, it's, it's funny how I've, I've kind of, because I've, I've said in the past in, in response to it, like I've never been able to get into um, like grime, like any UK rap. Yeah. And it's because it's because I hear enough of it when I walk out of my door. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's like kind of I I'm not a person who ever like really fell into the British culture. I was always stylistically more into American stuff. Yeah. So I think I think that's it's it's kind of similar how if you're from a place where you hear it a lot, you get sick of it quickly. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. I, I almost wish that I could view some stuff from my country from a different perspective because I think I would feel different about it. But, um, unfortunately that's not a thing, <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. but yeah, so, um, they really dove headfirst into the blues on this album. Mm-hmm. Um, heartbreak station, like I said, uh, they, de- there, there's a lot of Southern rock, blues, rock, classic rock kind of stuff. Like there's, there's definitely a few things on here that would point to some, uh, 70s influences for sure yeah um the more things change is a really good album opener like it is it's upbeat and fun and i like i like that um love's got me doing time has like kind of a funky aerosmith vibe uh shelter me i i do like but i get what you mean with like it being quite a departure uh heartbreak station melancholy acoustic guitar Mm -hmm. lead ballad uh sick for the cure it's just more more classic rock vibes uh one for rock and roll now this is a country rock song i have <laughs> like at, it, th- this is the thing and i personally love it again like i say we have differing opinions on on country but like i i love me some lap steel man like whenever i hear a like in there i i love it but like the I really like the like real majestic lead guitar parts in there too. Yeah. Um, Dead Man's Road is badass. I love how ominous it sounds. Um, Make Your Own Way is just positive affirmations in hard rock form. Yeah. A lot of this is just like stick to your guns, follow your fucking dreams, don't let anybody slow you down. Um, now, Electric Love is a sexy rocker, but I could not take my mind off the God of Thunder riff the entire time because <laughs> it, the guitar riff is rhythmically different. But if you look at it, it's pretty darn similar. And Love Gone Bad, this could have also been a late 70s Kiss song. <laughs> Uh, it's so finally, funny that when, you keep mentioning these bands that I love. You say Aerosmith, you say Kiss. You would think that I would be really into this stuff, but I'm just like, that's no, the thing, it just yeah. didn't connect with me. I, th- I think it could be that you want to hear Kiss doing Kiss or you want to hear Aerosmith doing Aerosmith. That's Aerosmith. absolutely like, true. Whenever I hear bands that come out, they're like, we're kind of going for an Aerosmith thing. I'm like, well, then la- I'm going to listen to Aerosmith. Okay, bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
and then f- and then finally, uh, Winds of Change, not the other Winds of Change that came out in 1990. <laughs> <laughs> I feel uh, like there's probably 20 song called 20 song um, called Winds of Change. And they all came out in 1990. Probably. <laughs> Just out of the blue. Um, yeah, finally, the this soft track closes out the record. And, you know, I, I really like it. I really like the... Uh, the fact that they they made a, ch- a creative choice that, to their credit on this one, it seems a little bit more bold than um, it would have done on uh, Still Climbing. Yeah. But, yeah. Comparatively speaking, yeah, it's, it's interesting it. to me because you, you have this album, and in the very same year, Poison's album, Flesh and Blood, came out which does have bluesy type stuff. But for some reason, the way that they do those songs and the fact that they hold on to a little bit of that hard rock vibe a lot more, it yeah. makes that album a more enjoyable album. And the, I feel like the songwriting is just stronger on that album, which is probably something nobody has said about Poison ever, but I just said it right now. <laughs> but I just, I just, I love that. Album. It's the same exact year, two bands that, that sort of had started to head down the bluesy road, but I just feel like Poison did it better than Cinderella in this partic- in this particular case. Um, Fair enough. But yeah, I don't know. Well, that brings us to my number two, um, which once I tell you, you're going to realize that this is the most boring ranking I've ever done. Um, <laughs> we've already <laughs> talked about this album. My number two is Long Cold Winter from 1988. So we're literally just, I just went backwards. It's a backwards trajectory. <laughs> so they literally were a band that, that each album wasn't as good as the one before. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, but like I said before, there's that huge space because I love Long Cold Winter, every song on this album. There's one thing I don't like that much, and I'll get to that. But overall, this is a fantastic album, and I, I think I could yeah. compare it to what Poison did with Flesh and Blood. Long Cold Winter is a better album than F- Flesh and Blood, but the fact that they did have these bluesy elements, but they still had parts even in those same songs that were interesting and more more of a hard rock thing, but still kind of sounded like their own sound. And yeah. that's why I think this album works so well. So the, the bluesy thing is fine. It's If you do that and it's chock full of great songs, then you know by all means you know go with go with your heart um the hard edge really just keeps some of these songs alive and um i already said it before that like it really did seem like after this album came out is when you really started to see a lot more bands being like oh this time we're gonna go a little bit more bluesy with things and i i feel like everybody heard long cold winter and said yeah yeah that's pretty good because <laughs> it because it is pretty great and yeah. this album all it's funny because, you know, you have Night Songs, which we'll talk about later, which has a really important part of, of my life from you know, being a kid. But Long Cold Winter has a really important connection to my life, and it actually came around again. It is where it happened, because I heard this album when it came out, and I liked it. But years and years later, um, you know, around 20, 2011, 12, 13, I don't really remember, some, somewhere like that. Um, I, I, I had like a rough patch in my life. A lot of things were going wrong in my life. I won't really go into it, but I started to find myself reconnecting a lot with eighties music in general. And yeah. a lot of, a lot of the eighties quote unquote hair bands or, you know, party bands or whatever you want to fucking call them. All of a sudden they became very, they became way more important to me because I found that some of their music sort of helped me escape from, you know, my brain and the shit that was going on in my life. And this album has a few songs that were, that were ones that were always being played. Gypsy road is one of them. Just that that song just feels good to me to the point now when I put it on, it just gives me that feeling of, Oh, everything's, everything's going to be okay. It just has that, that kind of vibe to it. And um, another one is The Last Mile. The Last Mile has a, it just has a vibe that I remember putting it on and just feeling very positive. And I'm like, well, that's got to say something about these fucking songs if they really are able to take me away from feeling like shit. Yeah. And then we already talked about it. Don't Know What You Got Till It's Gone is just a fantastic song. And um, so that brings us to my only, uh, 
my only gripe on the album, and that is the song Long Cold Winter. And in this song, hearing this song again now, because I I've never until now gone through the Cinderella catalog with a critical ear. It's always been feelings. How do I feel? How does this song make me feel? Am I having a good time? Am I kind of bored? Like, how do I feel? But now that I'm going into it critically, and I started to pull apart all the things about how I don't like, you know, the bluesy side of things that made them have less to less interesting songs. Tom's vocals on Long Cold Winter are kind of bad. And <laughs> his voice doesn't lend his, his self to that kind of singing because it needs to be, that song needs to be sexy. You need like a deep throated person or somebody like an Otis Redding or something to, to, to add some, some depth to it. But it's just him doing the, you know, freezing, I'm freezing. Yeah. And it just, oh. it, yeah, it, 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 it really like takes the air out of the song for me where I go, Oh, because it, cause like you said, it's got those cool, the cool organ in the back and yeah. stuff. And it's a cool song, but it made me really start going and I was listening to Tom's voice and I'm like, he's not a very good singer. <laughs> like <laughs> he's legit, not very good. Cause I was listening, I started listening to it and really going, he's flat a lot in most of what he sings. <laughs> and sometimes it just, it just feels weak. Some of his vocals. And I was like, I'd never listened to it that way before. Now on, on night songs and long cold winter, the music, for the most part, it's it's done in a certain way to where his vocals seem to really fit. It's almost like, you know, you don't go to a punk rock band and go to them and go, your singer can't sing very well, but they're in a fucking punk rock band. <laughs> so with Cinderella, it was almost like the grittiness and the I'm not a trained, you know, vocalist kind of vibe. It seemed to fit in really well with just like, I'm just a rocker dude and I have some shit to play and it, and I'm not going to try to 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 be the most amazing singer. But then you get to a song like Long Cold Winter that needs an amazing singer, and I go, ooh, yeah. okay. Um, <laughs> well, that adds a little hiccup in the album for me. But overall, I do like that song. And so I wouldn't say that there is a bad song on this album. The second half maybe gets a little bit not as good, if I got to be critical. These are the reasons why this one's number two. But... The second half has the song Coming Home, which has has the pleasure of being one of the small handful of songs that at some point in my life made me like tear up because I it was just I'm just like, this is so fucking beautiful. The way this yeah. song is put together, just the everything from the verses and choruses to the way that it leads out at the end with, you know, the I'm on my way. Like it just sounds it sounds great. And so um that that you know there's there's so many moments like that on this album that are so strong that I'm just like yeah this is a an amazing second album and this is how you do it really because if you if you think about where Cinderella ended up going long cold winter is the best if somebody said you know what does Cinderella sound like I would play them this album and not any of the other albums because I'm like you get both sides of it you get the you get the hard rock you get the bluesiness but also, there's a lot of really well-written songs. And so that's why it's my number two, because it's an amazing album. But they, um, I got, I mean, we'll, get, we'll get to it. We're gonna, we'll, we'll, now, we'll now lead into our joint number one album, the debut album from yeah. Cinderella, the 1986 album, Night Songs. Night Songs! That was, that was pretty good. I mean, that sounded probably better than he did. I'm going to do the night. <laughs> um, so it's, I'm going to throw it over to Eddie. What do you, what do you got to say about night songs? It's fucking perfect. It should, it's like mm -hmm. when it, when it comes to ballsy 80s hard rock, yeah. this is one of the essential albums. Yep. For sure. For sure. Like undoubtedly one of the finest hard rock albums of the 80s. Like, it's hair metal, but it's ballsy hair metal. And god damn, dude, did they hit it out of the park with this one. Like, mm -hmm. now I'm looking through the track list. Like, Night Songs, like, that's a pretty 
bold statement as well like to have quite a slow heavy groovy one to open the album like because it could have opened with shake me got and yeah. just been like oh hey here's the here's the single uh it's it's you know upbeat and fun but like the pre-chorus in night songs has to be yeah. one of the heaviest heaviest it's all i mean it's almost got it i mean they they there are elements to some of it that legit is metal like if you call yeah. them hair metal like there are a lot of hair quote unquote metal bands that have very little to do with metal but there's yeah. some major riffage going on in some of the songs here that's the thing. That that's like with Poison. They had like one actual metal riff, and that was <laughs> yeah. look what the cat dragged in. The rest of it was just doo wop with distortion. Yeah, um, I feel I feel like they they especially on night songs they have more in common with Rat, um, yeah. than than the other sort of hair bands. Yeah, for sure. This this definitely feels like they were more in the Rat. Dokken zone than they yeah. were in the in the Aerosmith zone, which is where they would begin to head. But like, um, gosh, shake me enters the party zone, full on mm. good time party vibes. Nobody's full is a classic power ballad. Um, now here here's the thing, this is one of those albums where I think the strongest material is slap bang in the middle of it, mm-hmm. because nothing for nothing. I've I've got in here. I've put that riff though, like yeah. in like in my opinion, this album's finest material is in the middle because these three songs coming up, including "Nothing for Nothing," are my favorites on the record. Mm-hmm. Um, Once around the ride again, that yeah. fucking chorus riff. Oh, da 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 favorite fast driving rock songs yeah ever like i remember i used to i used to start the album on nothing for nothing so that when i got to this was at my old house so when i got to the part where you can go a little bit faster i would time it so that it would be like okay (laughs) stick shift it was such a good feeling because um it just it's one of these albums that just feels good all the way through. Yep. Um Somebody Save Me is a great song with a with a funny video with Bon Jovi making a cameo at the end. That it, it, where well, the, they whole, the whole steal video all their is, chicks. Yeah, the whole video yeah. is pretty funny to me because it all it has that thing that you you used to see a lot in videos and in movies where when a rock band recorded an album, they all just played in the same room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, let's do another take. <laughs> and it's like, no, we didn't get that one quite. I'm all like, what are you, why, how, why are you recording them like this? You're like the worst engineer <laughs> in the world. It's like, I don't understand what's going on, but, um, but maybe, maybe they were just tracking the drums. I don't know, but it was just an, a funny video that it's just like, Let, let's get us in the studio. And then, yeah, at the very end of it, because like those, the three, the three videos from this album, is it "Shake Me," "Nobody's Fool," and um, and um, "Somebody Save Me." I think are the three yeah. videos, and they each three have those weird twins in them, the twin girls yeah. with the outfits and stuff, and it's almost like they're playing onto the Cinderella thing because they have the sister yeah. that oh we're going to the cinderella concert and you can't go yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> and um but uh but i always love the end of the video just because the all of the all of the um the dialogue is yeah is uh as they refer to it in the movie industry, it's ADR. So they went and recorded it afterwards. So none of the words yeah. are coming out of their mouths and they're all like, what do you say? We got a hit with this one. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> he's not saying that, you know? And then like, you know, when the, after the girls come out and they're actually running towards Bon Jovi, you know, yeah. there's like the ADRs and they're going, Oh man, come not again or whatever. <laughs> it's just so, it's so fucking cheesy. Yeah. But, um, you know, but to be fair, like, you know, their career, they they have uh, they have John Bon Jovi to thank cuz um yeah cuz he was a big a big supporter of them there's there, there's a few bands like Skid Row is another one that comes to mind that you know John Bon Jovi is a a really important part you know and, and honestly like I, the, I it's weird eventually we'll get to Bon Jovi and that will be a really weird um episode to do 
Yeah. <laughs> because they, they too were a band that all of a sudden went in a way where I go, whoa, I'm yeah. not really down with this anymore. But <laughs> from all accounts, it seems like John Bon Jovi's a cool dude. I don't know. He's, he seems, you know, he's the, yeah. pride, the pride of New Jersey next to next to Bruce Springsteen, I guess. <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, that's a great that's a great video. But I love those eight, the the videos off of this because they just have that fun eighties that you know this that every we're just having fun you know kind of yeah. vibe, and people like to shit on that era of MTV. But I'm just like in the world that we're in today, I look back on that longingly. I'm just like I don't yeah. I don't I don't necessarily want to live in a world where everyone puts on blinders and doesn't pay attention to to important things going on in the world. But when it comes to yeah. music and entertainment, I'm all like, yeah, I want to escape. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so so it's a good thing. That's the thing. It's it, everything in moderation, you know. It's yeah. like it's like if I listened to grunge all the time, eventually I'd get bummed out. If mm. I listened to glam all the time, eventually you, you do know, all the cocaine. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I'd OD. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's good to have it's good to have balance. And there's there's a lot of you know bullshit about you know oh you can't like this if you like this, and it's like dude, just switch your fucking brain off and have some of this coke. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing I never got, and I think it's because of where how old I was and, and just the friends that I had, because in, you know, when I got, when I was in my early teens, like we were listening, like, like I liked poison and anthrax and like, it was, there was no, for me, there was no battle between the bands. Like that was a thing that I learned from television where all of a sudden it was like, Oh, it's now it's, if you're into this, you're not into this. And I'm like, well, that's really weird. Why would you, why is, why does music have to be like sports teams? (laughs) Because that's just fucking (laughs) stupid. It's like, I I, I don't know. I guess that's a lot of things are ruined with the sports mentality, almost to the point where I feel like sports should just be outlawed altogether because it's (laughs) causing people to look at things in a really unhealthy way. But you know, that's, that's for another episode. (laughs) <laughs> cranked and ranked sports <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh where where was that where was i at? i'm uh, sorry you were on hell on wheels oh no no somebody save me <laughs> nah it's it, all good cool uh blah, blah, blah. i'm on uh in from the outside is a is a fun swaggery one that's um, that's that's the first one that i think that they all of a sudden you hear the bluesiness on it yeah, but just the way that it all comes together, it's w- way bigger and way more rocking. Yeah, it's just it's that little bit of swing in there. It's like da 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 push push again. The riff in Push Push is one of the most rocking things of the eighties. That is a riff that makes you want to grab your guitar and play it. It's yeah, it's like it's yeah it's really it's it just sounds fucking cool it's it, like i've i've even pl- played it in the past and just thought god what a fun fucking song this is yeah i need a little push push yeah. i saw oh, i saw there's a you can probably find it on youtube there's a live performance of them i think it's from 88 or 89 and you can watch the whole concert, and they then they open with push push, and I'm like, yeah, that is a fantastic concert yeah. opener. Like it's it's pretty cool. Definitely kicks it off. Yeah. Um, and finally, back home again, it, which gives credibility to that they weren't just a sweet saccharin hairband. You know, these guys could get heavy considering yeah. their vibe, and um, it kind of has a similar tone to night songs the opening track they, they're both kind of darker sounding songs yeah um but yeah this album is simultaneously gritty but fun like it it puts you in a good mood like a poison album would but it isn't as forgiving as a poison album at the same time there's yeah a, there is there's a certain rough edge to it that's that's the thing that really that really I, made me gravitate towards it because, like I said at the at the time, the other two albums that I was listening to a lot were the Final Countdown and Slippery When Wet, which are both 
mm. softer albums than Night Songs. Um, and that was that's really where it all started. Like I started to hear guitar sounds and gravitating towards that, where I was like, well, yeah. I like I like turn the distortion up and make the guitars loud and do some cool riffs. Like I before I even knew you know what riffs were. I would hear them and go, well, this is the thing that's attracting me to this music. And so that's yeah. why, you know, soon after this, you know, got into Guns N' Roses, um, which Guns N' Roses is another band. The Appetite for Destruction is a fucking pretty much perfect album. And then you get User Illusion 1 and 2, which I really love. But they did that same thing where all of a sudden they're like, oh, we, we're getting bluesy. Yeah. And, and I think the bluesy <laughs> songs are the ones where you kind of lose me a little bit on it. But it, seemed, yeah. but it just seemed like every band was like, you know, we're influenced by Aerosmith. And then all of a sudden they went, well, now we're just going to try to do Aerosmith. And I'm like, no, that's two different things, dude. It's like, you know, <laughs> I, if you're influenced by them, great. But, you know, it's like a, it's so weird. It's such a hard, to me, it's a hard style to pull off. And and Aerosmith doesn't get uh, enough credit uh, for being able to do that. Just like, just... I don't know. There's, there's, they, they, it's, I almost feel like so many bands, especially in, in the, in the eighties hard rock vein and a little bit later, so many of their songs, you could take parts and just connect it to an Aerosmith song and be like, this sounds kind of like this. <laughs> they, yeah. they already did that riff, you know, back <laughs> on draw the line. They already did that riff, you know, or, or yeah. whatever. <laughs> but, um, um, but since we're at this point where we're kind of in between both of us talking about our our, our co number one album, um, so so the, the thing that brought us here was was Jeff Labar passing away, and something that's fascinating to me that I never really thought about before is that I always in my brain Jeff Labar was the lead guitar player, but I barely ever see him playing lead. I think in the video for Shake yeah. Me, he plays one lead and then Tom Kiefer comes in and plays another lead. But for the most part, whenever I see a solo being played in this, in Cinderella, it always seems like it's Tom Kiefer. And, and Jeff just Labar was... the fucking spotlight. I know. What the <laughs> fuck, yeah. man? So I... So that... That's... Because I... And you know that, that Jeff Labar was capable... He, but yeah. he did. He did. He did the really sweet flinging the guitar around his back kind of shit, which I always. It's so weird how that came back around. I don't. You weren't. You were too young to know this, but it was like bands in the eighties would do the fling the guitar around their back kind of thing, and yeah. then it became. And then it became kind of dumb. But then all of a sudden, in the early two thousands, hardcore bands started yeah. doing that. <laughs> And I was always just like, what? That's like yeah. shit that Cinderella would do. Yeah. <laughs> now you guys are like, I'm going to flip this around my back. One of my favorite things I've ever seen ever is you've, you have to have seen that, that video of that um, metalcore band and they're playing in like a, a backyard and the dude's like really about to lay into it. He goes into his rock star stance and then just fucking yeets it about six miles oh. behind him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's that, there's a, there's that all, other good one too where it seems like they're a new metal band and the vocalist is about to go into the, now it's yeah. time to get the fuck up but then he gets hit in the <laughs> face with the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's like midway through a gnarly ass growl. He's like, straight to the yeah. motherfucking straight. Uh, oh, fuck. That's what yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just that's just dangerous. <laughs> but you know what? But he recovered from it pretty quick. Like he just checked I, his face. Am I bleeding? No. Let's go. <laughs> I, I love that. Like the band is still playing this like really heavy riff, and you just hear the, hear the whole crowd just go, "Ooh, Ooh. <laughs> yeah." <laughs> Almost to the point where I thought that they added that in like later in the video. But yeah. I, if it's really happening, if the oohs were louder than the band, that's pretty fucking crazy. <laughs> But yeah, the the fl the fling the guitar. Anyway, Jeff Labar, like it was it was interesting to me that he wasn't he didn't do as much lead as I previously thought that he did. Mm. And unfortunately, if you look at the albums, they don't they don't they don't seem like they're one of those bands that put who plays the lead, which is yeah. Sometimes I like that bands do that because I'm all like, if if there's a really awesome solo, like you know, with like Iron Maiden or something, like I want to know who who played this fucking solo. I don't want to give you know, Adrian Smith, all the credit, <laughs> which, which that's immediately where my brain goes like, ah, it's a great solo. It's probably Adrian Smith. Eventually we'll get to Iron Maiden and we'll talk about all that shit. But, um, 
But yeah, anyway, Jeff Labar, rest in peace. Um, y- you inspired us to. Oh, and and the what was the keyboard player's Ga- name? Uh, Gary Corbett. Gary Corbett. Um, you brought us to doing uh, Cinderella and brought us to having another joint number one, which my number one is Night Songs. And um, I already talked about like where where how I found this album and how important it is to me in my childhood, but it's. I hold it up there. You know, there's those great albums that have those killer one and two tracks, like number track yeah. number one, track number two. I say Night Songs Into Shake Me is pretty unfuckwithable. Like it's, yeah. it, it, I, I love the begin, how the album begins. Because if it had just started with Shake Me, I don't think it would have had the same power. Um, yeah. And because like Night Songs is a song, you crank that song up, it sounds heavy. And then you get, mm. a, and then you go in and you get the party vibe, you know, with Shake Me. Um, but listening to these albums all again, like I have to say, I, cause I actually listened to them backwards. I started with still climbing and then went backwards. And when I got to I night songs, same. yeah, when yeah. I got to night songs, I thought to myself, you know what? I prefer this sound from the band so much more that I would actually make the argument that this is the only actual Cinderella album. <laughs> like wow <laughs> like the way that i want them to sound this is it and mm. even though i do love long cold winter and they and they i agree they never made it made a bad album but for some reason they just nailed it so much here with what they were doing that i just the energy is so great on this album and 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 it's got you know it feels like 80s hard rock which you know like i said at certain times in your life you just want that vibe it's, and it's first album syndrome. Yeah. Pearl Jam did the same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which would, but you or know, at least for me, for yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but, and also to be honest, like, you know, while I did say that if somebody wanted to know who, who Cinderella was and they never heard them before, I'd point them at long cold winter. But if I want Cinderella night songs is the album I go to. Yeah. B- just because it's got everything I want. Like it's like, like you, like you said, it does have, like actual metal ish riffs in it and an amazing yeah. energy. And just the whole vibe of the album is just, it's, um, it's gotten to this point now that like, I realized that by the end of the eighties, there was so much glam and hairspray and, and bands doing similar styles. But yeah. now that we're so far removed from it, cause we're literally all go, going on 40 years you know, away from this album. And it, it almost feels like it's a, it's a, a a classic, like it's a classic, you know, like you go back and you want to watch an old movie that was filmed in black and white. You're like, well, the, the thing that I love about it is that it's back before they had color film and it's back when movies were made in kind of a different way and acting was done a little bit differently than it is today. So, To me, an album like Night Songs, it's just like this is a, a work of art from a time that I feel will never come around again. There may mm. be a similar type of, of, of vibe that comes around maybe after I'm long gone. But now a lot of these albums to me, I play them and I go, you know, you put them alongside all these other bands. I'm not, not talking about Cinderella, but if you put on, on Britney Fox which, you know, some people thought was an also ran Cinderella, Um, which I guess the lead vocalist of Britney Fox, I think, was in Cinderella at one point or something like that. But um, yeah, and they had a similar vocal delivery. They sang pretty much exactly the same way. At the girls school. Yeah. (laughs) But you put that on now and you go, well, at the time, yeah, I could see how this was just too too much of the same kind of shit. But now I'm just like, I there's not enough of this stuff. Like yeah, you, it's like you, a hidden gem. You, yeah, you run out of these bands that actually did these hard rock albums that actually had memorable songs and good songs. And that, that Britney Fox album had some good songs on it. And so I, when you look at Night Songs, Night Songs is like on top of the pile for me. Like it's up there with, with uh, uh, Open Up and Say Ah. And yeah. um, I don't know, um, the first couple rat albums, just like they're all things that are like on the top of just like all of this music that was coming out that got, you know, a little bit, you know, overdone, I guess, and ended up killing itself with the help of grunge. You know, I, I still, I still argue that grunge didn't kill hair metal. It was already dying. 
have, have you ever seen that? Uh, I think I might have sent it to you. It's it's that uh, meme from Eric Andre or something, and it's him. He shoots Hannibal and then turns around and says, "Who did this?" <laughs> you know, immediately after he shoots him to the yeah. camera, yeah. and it's like, and, and it was captioned with like glam shot glam yeah and it turns and it turns around and goes why would grunge do this yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 it was already because bands were already turned like i said they were already doing that thing where some of them were getting heavier some of them were getting bluesier yeah um i mean really the only especially in 1990 which we'll, we'll get to 1990 very soon yeah um you know there's that rat album that came out in 1990 that I think is still pretty, pretty heavy in the eighties, you know, with its whole style, but other bands were moving away. And, um, so yeah, it, 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 it kind of just killed itself and grunge was just like the last nail in the coffin as, uh, as some people say correctly. (laughs) I, you, you, one of my biggest pet peeves, I may have mentioned this before. One of my biggest pet peeves is people that, um, use the term death nail and it really drives me <laughs> up the wall. I know that it's a, it's a, it's a small, stupid thing, but I've heard people in positions of power who have a lot of money <laughs> give speeches where they say, and that was the death nail. And I'm like, that is not even a fucking term. <laughs> it is death knell, which is a toll, right? Like a bell toll. Yeah. Or the last nail in the coffin. There is no such thing as a death nail. To the point where I'm like, is there a band called Death Nail? Because I think I want to start one. Because that is a really cool... It's a cool and funny name at the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. We're, we're starting a band on the death podcast nail. called Death Nail. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's just one of those things. There, there are several things. Because I'm not... I, 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 when it comes to grammar, I'm, I'm, only, I'm only really picky about people's grammar if they're being an asshole then i'll point out yeah. you know oh you misspelled <laughs> this or you, you dumb piece of shit but for the most part it's in, in this day and age you know when yeah. it comes to there there and there like i've always thought to myself well did you understand the intent of what they were saying then you were being an asshole <laughs> it's like <laughs> doesn't matter but completely using a term that does not exist that's just become a thing <laughs> that people use even though it's not actually a thing Death nail, get off! Get get the fuck out of here with that shit. Get the fuck out of here with you! Oh and yeah, death so nail. so Cinderella. <laughs> so that yeah, that brings us to the end of Cinderella. That put, <laughs> that drives the death nail in this <laughs> episode of Cranked and Ranked, um, where we 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 yeah. So it was this was fun. I mean, t- Cinderella is a fun band, and um, you know, I got I, I ended up getting more critical of it than I thought I was going to. And um, next week's not going to be uh, the same kind of thing because we're going to keep we're going to keep the fun vibe going next week. But I guarantee, uh, I guarantee, fucking to you that my critiques next week are going to be less from the brain and more from the balls. <laughs> <laughs> Just, in, I don't know if that's the good way to put it. I think I, I think that's the best way to put it. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, so for those of you who are still here, peanut butter platypus, um, that is what we say to, um, our fans that actually make it through entire episodes. And there are a few, I would put them at the top of the peanut butter platypus pile. They're ones that have said that they, they'll listen all the way through to shows for bands that they don't even give two shits about. And I'm like, well, that is a huge compliment to me. Yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah, exactly. Sure. they are the the gold star peanut butter platypuses. You and you know that like once, if we if we blow up, you know we if we blew up huge, we're making a lot of money. You know, obviously we'd make merch and shit like that, but we will absolutely make peanut butter platypuses that you can eat, like a like a like a, yeah. like a chocolate Easter bunny. Only it's a peanut butter platypus. Awesome, and um, it'll just start showing up and in grocery stores and people will be like, what, what the, what, why does this say cranked and ranked on it? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, you have anything to say before we, uh, peace out? Uh, rest in peace, Jeff Labar and Gary Corbett fucking joined the super group in the sky. Rock on. Yeah. 
And oh, I yeah. and as a post note, like I did read recently that um, you know, because Cinderella was pretty much inactive, and it was all Tom Kiefer doing his solo stuff, which you know, obviously I'm not a fan of. Very, you know, he's it's fine. But um, I, I, apparently there was an interview where Jeff Labar talked about how his substance abuse was a really big issue about why Cinderella remained inactive. And I don't know yet if that's the reason why he passed away. Um, yeah, they haven't confirmed the cause of death as far as I know. Yeah, but it's either yeah. way, it's, it's, it's a sad thing. And um, that's, the, that's the one thing that I think about sometimes because I'm such a – my persona – online and on the on youtube is so much like i'm just having a beer but then i think about other people and i'm all like there are people with real issues with alcohol and luckily i've never been one of those people um yeah and and you know i I probably could have been easily and so i think about that and i go well that that just sucks and it and it I can only imagine like what I would have been like, like if I was in a Cinderella or a band like that in the eighties or when I was younger, where you got all this success and you did a whole lot of partying. And then all of a sudden you're the lifestyle that you knew was now, you know, not there yeah. anymore. And the boozing continues like that's a, you know, that's a fucking dangerous thing. I think we saw that with Janie Lane also, Yeah, you know? And so it's unfortunate, but, um, you know, I really do think that this is music that's coming around because now you have these big, you know, they have these big sort of all day festival things where it's just these bands from the eighties that play and stuff. And I think that the, the appreciation for this music, it's slowly building back up to the point where I think younger people also, well, you're, I mean, you're a younger person and you're into it, but you know, younger, normal, younger people, cause you are a very unique soul, sir. But, um, <laughs> but, that's uh, one way of putting it. <laughs> But I think it's coming around where eventually it's going to be, you know, not scrutinized in the same way anymore. It's going to be like, yeah, why would yeah. you not just throw this on and have a good time? It makes no fucking sense. I'm actually working on a, on a little, I'm kind of spitballing ideas in my head about like, a, I'm going to do a video on this, something along the lines of uh, like glam bands that deserve more respect. And oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm pro. I'm, it's coming down the pipeline, people. Sweet, <laughs> I'm on and, it. And I think Cinderella would be one of those bands. And, yeah. Um, so yeah. So thank you very much for for listening for for us. You know, go us going back into the to the '80s hair music. I guess I don't know. Yeah. It's a term that I hate, but it's become so used that I just you know I I I get what people are trying to say. There was a lot of big hair. Yeah. Um. But yeah. It's almost like if you're going to you know, use one really big aspect of a wardrobe to describe a style of music, I guess you could call new metal Jenko metal. <laughs> <laughs> you call it thrash high top metal and just keep going. And, yeah. uh, and hint, hint, there's some Jenko metal in your future, p- people out there. So um, <laughs> on that note, I'm going to get the fuck out of here before I say too much. And um, once again, thank you very much for listening to Cranked and Ranked. Um, peanut butter platypus to all of you that are still here and uh, we'll be back next week with another it'll be another really fun one um, yeah I think I, I'm gonna have a blast next week that's for damn sure um, for sure so until then as usual I'm just going to uh, I'm gonna back away and I'm gonna throw it over to Mr. Eddie Sparks to take us out light it down